Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our English news edition brought to you by Canal Algeri. I'm your host, Manel Mafa. First, to the headlines. The Algerian media landscape is to be shortly consolidated by a parliamentary TV channel to make citizens closer to their constitutional institutions. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and its allies decide to raise its output by 400,000 barrels per day starting from next month. And the Algerian football team is me today in Doha, Qatar, the Ghanaian side ahead of the African Cup of Nations tournament in Cameroon. Good evening, those were today's headlines. First, now our news and to concretize one of the 55 commitments of the President of the Republic. A preparatory meeting was chaired on Wednesday by the President of the Council of the Nation, together with the President of the National People's Assembly or Upper House of Parliament, for the launch of a parliamentary TV channel in 2022. The Minister of Communications, the Minister in Charge of Parliamentary Relations and the General Manager of the National Television Establishment were also present. Story by Manal Ammari. A new parliamentary television channel will soon be launched in Algeria and its programs will become a real link between citizens and their representatives in the two chambers of parliament. These programs will address and provide a real understanding of democratic practices within the elected institutions and inform viewers on the work performed by them. The creation of the parliamentary channel aims to promote true democratic practices through the representatives of the people. We have given a great importance to this aspect from the media's point of view so as to inform public opinion on the role of parliament and that of the people's representatives. The creation of this channel is part of the President's commitments aiming to bring citizens closer to constitutional institutions and promote citizenship and participation in public life. This channel will be up to international standards in terms of information through the setting up of a steering committee and the training of its journalists. This channel must be an effective tool for the parliament and its relationship with all bodies and institutions. Our department is committed to support this achievement and work towards its success. This new channel is scheduled to be launched this year on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of independence. Its creation comes after the completion of the constitutional edification of the state's institutions, which will undoubtedly contribute to the promotion of true democratic values. This new channel is a concretization of the thematic public media service, which will strengthen the country's communication sector in general and audiovisual media in particular. OPEC and its allies are maintaining their initial plan to increase oil production by 400,000 barrels per day by next February, a decision taken during the 24th OPEC Plus ministerial meeting held via video conferencing. For his part, the Energy Minister Mohamed Arqab calls for vigilance when it comes to the impact of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 on the oil market. More with Inez Kellou. Two meetings were held in order to assess the situation of the international oil market and its short-term prospects. The new variant of the coronavirus Omicron, which caused this disruption, topped the agenda of this meeting, especially with regard to the provisions and stability of the international oil market. We noted that the early compliance of all signatory countries to the agreement reached 117 percent, which is very appreciated, as it also allowed us to make a decision with regard to the evolution of the market for the month of February to increase our production OPEC and non-OPEC producers by 400,000 barrels per day. This increase in Algeria means 10,000 barrels per day, so our production will rise to 982,000 barrels per day for the month of February. 
This is a very favorable situation, and we noted that the fundamentals are correct. We have continued to monitor until we adjust or intervene in the event of maturity. But the communication between OPEC and non-OPEC countries is necessary, and we have to be more vigilant. Indeed, the extreme contagiousness of the new Omicron variant may impact the fundamentals of the oil market and represents a major risk on the functioning of economies and consequently on oil demand. For a better university experience, a partnership protocol was signed between Qasdi Merbah University, located in Wargla province, and the oil company Altea Energy of Hasim Saud. This latter will host researchers and students in their technical and practical training in the energy sector. According to a communique released by the Ministry of Health on Tuesday, 421 new confirmed cases of coronavirus, 266 recoveries and five deaths have been recorded in the last 24 hours in Algeria. The Health Minister, Abdurrahman bin Bouzid, who was the special guest of our previous bulletin, called the Algerian citizens to get vaccinated to avoid further complications with a possible fourth wave. I call on all the Algerian citizens to get vaccinated. We have the necessary vaccine available, yet the vaccination rate is still low in comparison with other countries. Getting vaccinated is a must, as we are threatened by a fourth wave. We have to be vigilant and get jabbed as soon as possible to avoid further complications. The Moroccan journalist writer Titi Al Habib described, described the Algerian victory of the football FIFA Arab Cup politically beneficial to sustain and support our people's and youth's resistance against the normalization of relations with the Zionist entity. In an excerpt of his column in the daily newspaper and Najd Demokrati entitled The Football Arab Cup and the Palestinian Cause. Let's follow the details in this report by Karim Faz Zakari. The victory of Algeria in the FIFA Arab Cup was politically beneficial to support the resistance of our people against the normalization of relations with the Zionist entity. This was the statement of the Moroccan journalist writer Titi Al Habib. In his column in the daily newspaper An Nahjad Demokrati, entitled The Arab Football Cup and the Palestinian Cause, the columnist explains that after the fixture that gathered Algerian and Moroccan teams in the quarterfinal, Algerians lifted the Palestinian flag, saying that they dedicated the win to Palestine because they defeated the team of a normalizer state. According to the same writer, if Morocco won, quote, the Arab Cup would have been the occasion to give life to the so-called accord of the century. Fortunately for the Palestinian cause, the scenario didn't take place and the Algerian team triumphed and it's a well-deserved sports victory and politically useful to support the resistance of our people and our youth against the normalization." I congratulate and hail all the Algerian people on the occasion of their victory of the Arab Cup, which was a well-deserved win for the free Algerian people. If Moroccans won, it would have been useful for the Moroccan Mahzen, who would have used it for scandalous ends. It's worth recalling that the social front is always in turmoil. Citizens maintain the pressure on the regime by keeping taken to the street since the normalization of relations. Moroccan lawyers and journalists abroad are denouncing the human rights violations carried out by the Mahzen regime, ranging from imprisonment, repression to prosecution for the simple reason of protesting. More details with Manal Ammari. Moroccan activists, lawyers and journalists have been denouncing for weeks the innumerable violations of privacy by the Moroccan security services who use illegally recorded videos to blackmail victims. The latest case is that of kickboxer Zakaria Mumni, 
who was imprisoned in 2010 for denouncing corruption in the world of sports and wanted to report it to the king, who saw the widespread of a video all over media outlets in which he was seen receiving a sum of money in compensation for the torture and imprisonment suffered in Morocco. The Moroccan legal expert Mohamed Ziyan indicated that recordings of all kinds are completely prohibited in Moroccan law, except for an order from the examining magistrate or an authorization from the first president of the Court of Appeal, explaining that the recordings could only be used in cases of terrorism or international drug trafficking. 2022 will not be an easy year for the dictator Mohammed VI and his supporters, especially the conman Munir al-Majidi, his own writer, and the director of adult films, Abdel Latif Hamushi, in addition to Yasin al-Mansouri and all the criminals who trample on the Moroccan people and who try to tarnish their image with smear campaigns now exposed to the world. The Moroccan intelligence services have files on all public figures. The slightest disagreement exposes the defendant on the spot to defamation, which could even happen to supporters of this regime at the highest levels. Most recently, the Moroccan YouTuber Dunia Filali was the subject of legal proceedings. She landed in France a few months ago when is seeking political asylum. On her channel, she denounces and investigates the corruption and repression organized by the Mahzen. We are starting the new year with great news. That is a slap in the face of the dictator Mohammed VI and his savage repressive regime. We now have Dunia Filali, who is seeking political asylum in France, which is a snub at this regime, which uses all methods of intimidation, defamation, extortion, with fabricated blasphemous images and attempted suicides. Many Moroccan politicians and journalists use social media to freely express their ideas and opinions on a number of issues due to restrictions on their freedoms to tackle issues linked to politics. The Mahzen's mismanagement, corruption of the political class and the situation in the countryside and all that is censored in the media goes through social networks with no restrictions. The political science researcher Sharif al believes that the use of social media by some politicians and journalists can be explained by various reasons, the main one being the restriction of freedom. The Communist Refoundation Party in Italy calls on the Italian government to put pressure on Morocco to comply with the obligation to protect the Sahrawi activist Sultana Khaya, who is under house arrest since November 2020 and who is subjected to recurring violations. On the ground, military operations continue along the wall of shame. Units of the Sahrawi Liberation Army carried out new attacks against the Moroccan occupier in the regions of El Mahbes and Hausa. Few months ahead of the Mediterranean Games slated for next June in the western city of Oran, the different infrastructures will be shortly completed to the great joy of the organizers. In Eskillu, with the report. The works of the Iran Sports Complex is coming to an end, and the sports facilities that meet the international standards, such as the 800-seat shooting range. The work is 93% done. We are in the last phase before the end of the project. It is a complex which consists the creation of five Olympic pits intended for the sports shooting, and it is 98% done. Covering an area of 7 hectares, this space dedicated to shooting sports will be divided into two parts, the first in the open air and the second in an enclosed space. The works will be finished in February at the latest and in April we will organize the test event prepared by the organizing committee of the Mediterranean Games. During the last visit of the technical team, we had a favorable opinion. We will work together to ensure an event that meets the international centers. <laughs> Only a few months before the beginning of the Mediterranean Games, all the human and material means have been deployed in anticipation of this 19th edition in order to offer the participants all the necessary comfort. 
The national football team faces on Wednesday the Ghanaian side in a friendly game before heading to Cameroon to take part in the African Cup of Nations tournament. The game, due to be held in the Qatari capital, Doha, at at 5 o'clock p.m. is to be transmitted by the national and the Shababia channels of the Algerian television. It is worth mentioning that Algeria starts def defending its African title in Group E along with Sierra Leone, Equatorial Guinea and Côte d'Ivoire. That was it for our news today. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.